Hi folks, thanks for being here today and for standing up today and other days, as I know you'll keep doing, until those child prisons are shut down forever yeah. in this country. Like Ron, I've been a lawyer for more than half my life. I've been a civil rights lawyer for over 40 years. But you know what? The culmination of my legal career was not in the courtroom. It was not a legal case. The culmination of my career was two weeks ago when I went down to the Homestead Child Prison to stand up for those children who are caged behind bars. I went during debate week, it was my second trip, and I want to paint you a picture just so you know what it was like, okay? The boys start marching out from between the huge tents. There are eight to ten boys marching single file with two guards in front and two guards behind them. The boys march slowly, about three feet apart. Each boy's eyes are a little downcast, looking toward the back or in front. They do not glance in our direction. We understand and we've been told that they, the guards, have threatened the children that if they engage with us in any way, they look at us, if they smile at us, if they wave at us, they're going to be detained even longer. It's that much longer that they'll be, out, they'll be kept away from their families who they love. And the kids look so lonely and despondent and hopeless. I and the other witnesses are watching the kids from the second step of a little step ladder that's across the street from the eight foot fence that surrounds the child detention center. Why have we come to this distant, ugly, scorching place so far away from my comfort zone for sure? We've come to bear witness to see the kids, to see the kids, to bring visibility, to shine a spotlight on these terrible human rights violations that our country is perpetrating in our names, in perpetrating in my name, in your name, in everybody's name, and with our tax dollars too. We witnesses have come to support the kids and to let them know that we see them. And yes, to let them know that someone does care about their well-being and wants to give them back their childhood. We have come to give these children of God some hope. We wave three-foot red hearts attached to sticks for the kids to see. The guards have told them that we're there to get them deported. But when they see the hearts, they know we are friends, not enemies. We shout out, hola, estamos con ustedes. We are with you. Los queremos, we love you. Justicia, justice, libertad, freedom. Some of the boys look up. Some of them start to smile. They get our message. We call out again, we wave our signs. Their smiles start to spread to the others and they wave at us. They make, they make small red, small hearts. They make small hearts with their hands. They blow us kisses. We blow them kisses back. show them that we love them and they get it. <coughs> I like to make myself believe that maybe their spirits really have been buoyed by our support. <coughs> maybe the kids really have become stronger and better able to stand up tall and get through this outrage without losing much more of their humanity. Thank you. There you go. So our group in New Hampshire, 10th Street Coalition here in Concord, which is an amazing group of grassroots organizers in Concord, and all over the state, similar grassroots groups have been bird-dogging the presidential candidates. 
We've been following them around everywhere. Some days, one of our people bird dogs them in northern New Hampshire in the morning, and I, uh, bird dog <laughs> Bernie Sanders the same afternoon here in Concord. And we tell them about the crisis on the border, and it's not the crisis Trump is talking about, it's the separation of families, the inhumanity, the unwelcoming to, that the United States is, should never be a part of, and, and the caging of children, like those children there, except they're real children down at Homestead. And our ask to the candidates has been, until two weeks ago, while you're in Miami for the Democratic debates, please make a visit to Homestead. It's only 29 miles away from Miami. Go down there. Witness for yourselves. Raise your voice. Bring your visibility and the multitudes of media that are following you everywhere. And the word will get out. And maybe more people will come out the next time. And more and more of our country will be talking about this as an issue that we care about, that we have to care about. We have to care about it. If we lived in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, what would we be doing? We say about the Germans, gee whiz, they should have done something. What are we doing? During slavery, what would we be doing? During the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s, when people were getting killed, getting beaten to a pulp, being denied their rights all over the place, what were we doing? Well, you think we'd do something different if we were in those situations? We have to look in the mirror because we're doing it now. And we have to act now and in the future, not wait for the 2020 election. We have to do now what we would do if we were living in Nazi Germany in the 30s. We will not allow this to happen. Never again means never again. What is Homestead? It is the largest child prison in the United States. It also happens to be a for-profit prison. Shame! 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 So the congresswoman who represents that district, Debbie McCastle Powell, told us that there are about 3,000 children detained at Homestead. 3,000 children. Well, that's a number. How do we wrap our minds around that? It's enough children to fill 42 school buses to their maximum capacity. Imagine lining up 42 school buses and filling them with children and then cramming them into this concentration camp. It's enough children to fill up 130 average classrooms in an American classroom. But of course, these children are not in class, are they? No, they're locked up in this prison. And why? They're being punished. They're being sent as a message, their punishment is sent as a message to discourage people outside the United States who are fleeing violence. Don't come to see us because we don't welcome you. We're gonna separate your family and put your kids in cages. Shame! 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 And these kids have done nothing wrong. They have done nothing wrong. They're just kids, like your kids, like my kids, like everybody's kids. Nunca mas. Nunca mas, si. Nunca mas. They're not allowed any physical contact at all. They can't even hug each other. Shame! They can't. Shame! 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 They can't even Shame. hug siblings. 
So if you're a child in there and your little sister or little brother is crying, had a nightmare, is afraid, misses mommy, any of those things, you can't even give your sibling a hug. Shame! Comfort them. Shame! 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 So imagine this many traumatized children who've been untouched for months. Think of the PTSD. Think of the attachment disorders. Think of how it's going to be when they eventually, hopefully, get re reunited with their families and they think, I don't want to be with you, mom or dad, because you're the one that sent me away, separated from me, didn't protect me from these evil prisons. It's just uh, staggering how we are ruining lives, perfectly innocent lives. And they came seeking asylum. They're leaving, fleeing from massive violence. There are gangs, there's organized crime, there's a drug cartel. One woman that we talked to a few weeks ago uh, came with her children and her niece, her 10-year-old niece, because not only was this woman shot, not killed, but her sister, the girl's mother, was murdered. She was shot in the head. That's what these people are fleeing, and they are trying to just come to some safety. And I'm gonna be kicked off soon. <laughs> but let me end by sharing with you my last day at Homestead, because it profoundly affected me. The debates, the candidates, the media circus are all over. I have to run to catch my plane back to New Hampshire. But I can't leave without taking one more look at these incarcerated children. I'm all alone at the lookout site. Everyone else has left. I get back up on the stepladder and peer over the fence. I hold up my large red sign, which I don't have anymore. No, I don't have the sign. I don't know where it is. Um, and just like before the kids start smiling, they wave at me. They, okay, thank you. They take off their hats and they swirl them around. I know they're suffering greatly behind these prison walls. But they're able to smile, if only briefly, when they're reminded that there are people out there who care about them. They're not forgotten. They're not invisible. I take one last look before I go. I swear to you, I will never forget these images as long as I live. They're beating in my heart. They are seared into my soul. And now that I'm back, I'm trying to tell everybody I know about this. I hope you all tell everybody you know. Get people out there. We can't wait for 2020. Let's organize and demonstrate as often as possible on Friday afternoons here at State House Corner, 4 o'clock. A bunch of us are demonstrating with our little cage here. Um, you can do it anywhere you live, and please get out there and stand up for these children. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.
I've heard some of you have song sheets. Can you raise your hand if you have a song sheet? Some folks, okay, so we're gonna do some teaching. Listen, my people, some of you may have it on your song sheets. We have English, we have Spanish, and we have Hebrew. Do you people see that song? Yes. Great. Call and response. Listen, my people, my condors, my eagles. Listen, my people, my condors, my eagles. Oye, mi gente, traemos la fuerza. Oye, mi 